Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel and welcome back to the Celtic Transfer Talk series. I know it's back after a wee, wee bit of an absence. Excuse the clapping there. After a wee bit of an absence, uh, the January transfer window is right around the corner, so I couldn't think of a more fitting time to bring the series back. This will just keep going on throughout the month of December, throughout the month of January, as Celtic are active in the transfer window. Try and bring them out as often as possible when a story kind of develops and is seeing some truth in it. I'm not going to bring out ones if there's a rumour Celtic are ready to sign Cristiano Ronaldo. I call him a gym on Twitter aged 14. I'm not going to talk about it if it's something like that. I'm only going to talk about it if there does seem there's some truth to it. And there are a couple of stories that have broken out over the past week or so that do look as though they have some truth to it and it could be important because as we know, this is a very important transfer window for Celtic. One of the most important in recent times you could say because we have saw the weaknesses in Brendan Rodgers' side. 69 games or whatever unbeaten now. We are fantastic. I'm not going to take it away from us. We are a very good team uh, and I'm very proud of how we're playing but when, we, when it comes to Europe we see our weaknesses uh, and these weaknesses have to be fixed if we want to develop uh, as a European side is trying to get somewhere in Europe, get far, get to a cup final say or a semi-final, even a quarter final you know in the Europa League. We need to develop these weaknesses uh, and it's very important for Brendan Rodgers to make the right signings to do so and hopefully the board will supply the money for him to do so. We know where these weaknesses are you know there's players we need to look out for probably with someone in the wings uh, as Patrick Roberts goes down with injury and such and just more importantly the, the sole focus as it has been for years upon years is just getting the right defence it just never seems like we have the perfect defence it always seems like we have a questionable defence but now more than ever especially in European competition we know how bad our defence can be uh, and I don't need to talk about that too much because I talk about it in every you know match preview review fucking everything under the sun I talk about how you know our defenders are lacking that little bit that we need in Europe to ensure that you know safety and security at the back to really go forward and get the confidence against these big teams so Celtic will be looking into that and a couple of stories have came out suggesting that and you've probably heard about a couple of them but I'm just going to give my kind of points to it my view on it uh, the first one is obviously Marvin Comper we've all heard it by now probably Marvin Comper Red Bull Leipzig centre half uh, 32 years old we're looking at here uh, has been linked with a £900,000 move to Celtic 32 year old centre half this one for me uh, I'll talk actually I'll talk about Comper a little bit more this season he struggled to get into the, the Red Bull Leipzig team hence the reason Leipzig are looking to get rid of him bringing a little bit extra money uh, and the Leipzig obviously have been fantastic over the past couple of years since coming up to the Bundesliga they've been prolific they've been very good to watch exciting football and very good players developing in that team but Comper obviously one of those aging players and, and Leipzig are really you know they're really trying to develop these kind of young guys coming to the team they've got players like Klosterman Willi Orban uh, Timo Werner uh, Bruma, very young guys and it seems like Comper is now kind of an outcast in that team because of his age and uh, we're happily wanting to take him out of our hands this year he's only had about three appearances but if we look at his stats and I, I'm trying to look at my wee cards you know just to, just to get the, the information right last season made uh, 25 appearances he's formerly played for Fiorentina Hoffenheim two other big teams in their, in their um, your divisions it's a player that I would happily take. I feel like the experience is going to going to benefit us. He, he's probably a solid player. I didn't watch much of Leipzig last season. This season I've watched a lot more of them. Um, but, you know, he's not played. So I can't really judge him. There's not too much I could say on the individual himself for his performances. But, you know, he played 25 appearances in a very important season for Leipzig last year. A very good season. So he does have some qualities in him, I'd imagine. And he's got the experience there. But the, the problem with this signing, and the problem with him all together is... He can't play in the Europa League for us. I don't know if you've heard about it. He is cup tied because he's already played in the UEFA competition, UEFA European Cup competitions and the Champions League with Leipzig. So I don't see where the use comes in here because domestically our defence, once again, still can be questionable, but nine times out of ten our defence is rather solid and when it comes to the Scottish Premiership. Semenovic, Boyata, Svetchenko, such and Tierney, Lustig. They all look fine. There's the odd game where you think, Jesus Christ, that's woeful. But... More importantly, what we need to focus on here is the bigger picture in, in the Europa League. And why would we spend the money on a centre-half for him not to be able to play in the Europa League? That's what I don't understand. I'm more than happy if we sign him. I'm not more than happy. I'm happy. But it just doesn't make much sense to me if he can't play in the games we need him. Um, so I don't know how much truth is behind it, but it seems to be heavily, heavily covered from multiple sources. It seems like it might happen, more than likely going to happen. And it's just quite questionable because... We really should be looking for a defender who can play in the Europa League because then if we bring him in and then we do bring in a defender who can play in the Europa League, then we're going to have so many centre-backs in the club where, where, you know, there's going to be players who are not getting games. It's just kind of, it all just kind of, 
it all doesn't make sense to me to an extent, but player has experience and such, uh, it could be a valuable asset. Eric Svetchenko's still sitting there, I'm dying for him to get back into the team, I still think he's a quality defender, he can be brilliant, I want him to get back from this injury, I want him to show his true quality over the likes of Bayata and Seminovic, which I believe, if he plays at his best, he can be better than the two of them. Uh, so that is the first one, we're also apparently looking at another centre half, similar situation, 32 year old, playing for Besiktas, this one I've not seen as much heavily covered, I only saw about it today, his name, I'm trying to look for here, there we go, Dusko Tosic of Besiktas, centre back, Serbian international, now he's made a few appearances for Serbia, same scenario, 32 years old, but the same would apply to him, I'm sure, I'm sorry, I'm, I keep rubbing my nose, but the same surely applies the cup type thing, because he's played the Champions League with Besiktas, and Besiktas have got through to the last 16 as well, and he's a guy who's making appearances this season, I'm looking here, 20 appearances already this season, he played in all six of the Champions League group stage games, All of th this one seems a lot more unrealistic for me, because Besiktas are obviously through, and he'll be thinking to himself, why would I want to downgrade from the Champions League, uh, and take the move away, but, you know, surely he wouldn't be able to play for us, he's a wee bit older, which I don't mind, but like, I just don't understand it to the fullest extent. This, he honestly, to me, looks like he could be a better option. He is playing this season, unlike Compa. He's been playing in the Champions League as well. Probably brings a lot more to the table. But the centre-halves are being looked at. That's what matters. Hopefully, we've got a whole pool of options um, that we are looking into. I'd prefer to just bring somebody in who can play in the Europa League, personally. But um, a centre-half is a centre-half. And especially if we're going forward, we just need to improve on the, the defensive positions. Because we know how bad and how woeful they could be. On to the next set of transfer news. It's just a tiny bit more um, before we end off this episode. Charlie Masonda will be going out on loan, according to Antonio Conte, from Chelsea. And there has been talk, uh, I think Brendan Rodgers even mentioned it, that Celtic could go back in for Charlie Masonda on a loan deal, sparking the interest up again for us, which would be a phenomenal signing, even if it's just for the six months. Now that Patrick Roberts is out, we really do need that extra winger in here because Forrest, Sinclair are the only two kind of fit first team wingers we have who play on a regular basis uh, so I would like to see us get him in if possible but the, the reality is there's going to be a lot of competi competition to sign him a lot of teams will want him a lot of Premier League teams will probably want him hopefully the Europa League kind of attracts him to maybe come to us it's something not to get your hopes up about something I'm not going to get my hopes up about but it would be a phenomenal signing he is a very prolific very good player um, very very quick uh, and he would add a lot to the team. I feel like he'd be very dangerous for those Europa League games where we need that kind of, you know, you, you always need that wee spark. It's something Patrick Roberts always brings, the spark to get you past. Um, I, I, if you're having a rough 10 minutes and he comes on, he, he, he lights the team up a wee bit, brings a bit of momentum onto the park. And, and I like that. And that's the sort of player I think we'd get with Misonda. And hopefully he will come in. Final story, final thing to talk about. Moussa Dembele, obviously all sorts of teams looking at him. Every team under the fucking sun apparently wants Moussa Dembele. Hopefully we'll manage to see him stay over the January transfer window. And I do imagine he will stay over the January transfer window. It's a few Premier League teams. The likes of Brighton and such have been like the fucking... I just, I just can't understand, like, if he has any... And I love Moussa Dembele. He's like my favourite player at Celtic. I mean, Cal McGregor anyway. And um, if he has any sort of, you know... I was going to say respect, but if he has any sort of sense, surely he would pick Champions League football, winning trophies, getting first team football week in, week out with Celtic, playing at Champions League especially over fucking Brighton. No no disrespect to Brighton, because they've came up to the Premier League, they're doing pretty well, but just that just for me seems like such a bad move, Celtic to Brighton, when Busa Dembele is so much better than that, I think. I mean, the likes of Chelsea were like talking about him last year, so I'd hate to see him go to the likes of Brighton or something like that, but a few teams are in the mix for him. We'll see how it goes. I, I would love to see us get a lot of money for him if he was to go, and I think then we need to look at the options, maybe an even odd son Edouard, to, we need to replace him, We need because he's a big player, and we need an, an even bigger player, I would say, to, to try and fill that, that void without him, but uh, I don't see him going during January, hopefully, but it is very realistic if these teams are, you know, throwing bids in constantly, because eventually there's going to become a breaking point for the Celtic board, for, for even Brendan Rodgers, say, right, that money we can't knock back. But hopefully we don't need to worry about that in January, and we'll see how it goes moving forward. That's the only things really to talk about. Sorry if I've kind of rushed my way through it. I just didn't want the video to last about three hours. Um, so I, if you have enjoyed it, make sure to like and subscribe. Let me know your thoughts on the links at the minute in and out of the club and even any players you would love to see come to Celtic. I'm still just crossing my fingers waiting for John McGinn. I'm going to be there at the unveiling with the banner and there's a computer went off. That's, that's a signal for me to stop, isn't it? Uh, I'll see you all later.